to At the Disney Movies with the Hearts. I'm Kelly. I'm David. And this week, we get the origins of You Feeling Better, Ocho. The Love Bug from 1968. Or is it 1969? It could be either one. According to Disney Plus, it's 1969. According to everything else, it's 1968. We'll just call it 1968. Yeah. I don't know why it's different, though. Eh, Mistakes can be made. Everyone has a fantastic story to tell about his car. Now, get lined up for the one that tops them all. It's the story of Herbie, the screen's first four-cylinder star. Did you see this thing take off? One of your showboat tricks, Mr. Douglas. I tell you, I had nothing to do with it. Hey, we were turning. What did you think about this original movie, David? You're feeling better, Ocho. What? (laughs) It's a fine movie, but it... Is it? uh, Is it? Yeah, the more time I've thought about it, the less fine I think it is. I think this movie is incredibly boring, in my opinion. That's kind of where I'm going now. I was higher, and the longer I get away from it, I'm feeling a little bit like, oh no, this is kind of boring. Because it's going to be really hard to talk about it. It just didn't have that same quality that Herbie Goes Bananas had. (laughs) Like, it just, it, I was ex- I was prepared for that, and I felt <laughs> well, as though they were trying to make it serious or something. But there this. was no Cloris Leachman in this. No, there was no Cloris Leachman, but it was just not as good as Herbie Goes Bananas. But, I don't know, it was a better movie than Herbie Goes Bananas, but it wasn't as good as Herbie Goes Bananas. Um, when I'm watching one of these old school live action Disney movies, I want it to make absolutely no sense and have a bunch of slapstick humor. And this was just, oh, we're going to try to make it serious, sort of. And it just... Sort of? I don't know. I don't know if it was that serious. There was one part in particular where they were like, oh, we're going to make it all... It just, I don't know. It just, it just didn't have that same likable quality. Either. You didn't think that Buddy Hackett was not serious? No, he was great, but I just, I don't know if, I just didn't really, wasn't really feeling Dean Jones in the lead of this movie, which... He was awful. He just, right? I just, I think that might have been part of the problem, and it was just really off-putting to have Mr. Banks as the... I thought Mr. Banks was great. No, he was hilarious, but I just couldn't separate the two. Really? It was basically the same character, but in a different setting. I thought I know, it was fine. and that's why it was just uh, off-putting to No, me. I thought it was great. I wonder which one, which one came first. Oh, it had to have been the. It had to have been Mary Poppins because this is 1968. Yeah, well, now I have to know. Mary Poppins is four years before this. Yeah, that's what I thought. I just wasn't. I don't know. I wasn't really into it. I think I thought it was probably better than you did, and I probably gave it a ridiculously high rating. That's but... fine. That's fine. I just, it's, um, I was kind of disappointed that they didn't explain where, why it was called the love bug. Okay, so that, I'll just sneak into one of my fun facts. Like, the the script that it was based off was called Boy Girl Car. And I think it's meant to bring people together. Because remember when it brings those two together? Yeah. I think that that's supposed to be the love bug part. Is He's supposed to make them fall in love. Which is stupid. Don't get me wrong. Because that was literally one of the smallest parts of the movie. And it was one of the most out of place parts of the movie. I didn't think it was out of place. It was just underdeveloped. And then It was less developed than the boat necks. Okay, so that was also (laughs) part of the problem, is I kept thinking that this chick was the same chick from the boat necks, like, for, like, 75% of the movie, and I was like, eh, this is uncomfortable. No, that chick is way hotter than this one. This this lady looked older than Dean Jones, but she was not. She did look a little old. Yeah. Yeah, I was just not really into it. Kelly was not <laughs> feeling this movie. I was It just seemed really long. It like, was it was uh, way like, too long. And some of the scenes just went on and on and not in like a charming I'm <sighs> going to look back on this with fond memories 
Swiss Family Robinson snake wrestling scene. <laughs> this was just like, oh my god, do I have... It was have like, a oh, long, long time. Maybe it's because I don't really need car racing in my life. Yeah, this is this is going to be tough to talk about. So go ahead and read the synopsis. Why do you say it's going to be tough to talk about? Half of it's racing. Yeah. <laughs> I like how this is the cover picture, too. Yeah, the five (laughs) seconds of the movie. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. The Love Bug from 1969. Sports, family, comedy, action adventure. Action adventure, whatever. It pretty much is. (laughs) He's the star who provides the most laughs per gallon. He's Herbie, the lovable car with a mind of his own. Dean Jones, Michelle Lee, and Buddy Hackett join Herbie in this revved-up comedy classic. Jones plays down-on-his-luck race car driver Jim Douglas, who reluctantly teams up with the little machine. While Douglas thinks his sudden winning streak is due to his skill, not Herbie's, he finally realizes the car is worth when a sneaky rival plots to steal Herbie for himself. Contains tobacco descriptions. (laughs) I don't recall the tobacco descriptions. I don't either. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so I think that actually the biggest problem with this is I don't really buy Dean Jones as a down on his luck race car driver. He seems too fancy for that. I don't have a problem with that. I just think Dean Jones did a really, really terrible job in this movie. He was kind of unlikable. A little bit, yeah. Which was off-putting. And I kind of think he was supposed to be a little unlikable, but... He never reached the likability scale at the end that he was supposed to. Hold it, you two. I've done great with this little car so far, thanks to a few changes I made, and if you don't mind, some pretty fair country driving. Yeah, because he's just kind of a flat character. And he's kind of a douche. I mean, he's always, oh yeah, easy money and fast cars. I don't know. Also, the script was a little weird. Some of the dialogue was kind of strange, and it just it, yeah. it was not very popping one of the one of the things that I, I kept coming to mind for me was the movie cars you know that's a really inter- because buddy hackett was basically mater that's a really interesting observation because i can totally see that yeah because he ooh, that's really interesting actually because it's almost like cars took the plot of this right and- without the oh car of a mind of its own because it's ooh, i'm a race car driver i don't need help from anybody blah, 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 right blah. oh and here's this small town and it's like it, 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 I, I don't know why, but throughout this whole movie, I kept thinking about cars. No, that's a fair assumption, actually. Yeah. I, I think that I might have been thinking about that, too, without knowing I was thinking about it. Because I was like, this reminds me of something. I don't know what it is. But, but it was very strongly that Buddy Hackett and Mater are the same character. Correct, sir. But just redneck versus hippie yoga San Francisco guy. Yeah, and the fact that you, like, you would really have not known this was in San Francisco if they didn't say it. Well, or put the terrible overlays of San Francisco. <laughs> well, yeah, but They I did mean, not film this anywhere near San Francisco. No, it just, there was a couple scenes where you're like, oh, it's in San Francisco, obviously, but... Um, they said it a couple times, yeah. too. Yeah. I just was a little disappointed because the director, Robert Stevenson, has such a, th- a thick thick resume but see this movie is also just as beloved as his thick resume of mary poppins bed knobs and broomsticks that darn cat and then the little weakness of the monkey's uncle and don't forget old yeller old yeller darby o'gill and the little people which we have yet to watch yeah so and really this this movie is an all-star cast of all the 70s and 60s disney movies that we have to watch there's somebody from almost every movie in this movie there's also the i don't even remember what part he played but the dude from the boat next the oh 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 he was at the beginning oh was he yeah he played like one small part i think it was the um not the bookie (laughs) the bookie but the there was some small part at the beginning like like he was like a cab driver or something i don't know Oh, okay that makes sense um it had a lot of really good actors, but I did think that part of it was the material was not very good that they were working with. Like, the the script, I don't think, was very good. I I don't... I think that's part of it. I don't think you're wrong. But I also think that Herbie being such a central character is a bit of a problem. Well, and he didn't have... 
he was almost a subdued Herbie. Like, in Herbie Goes Bananas, he's like, boop, 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 I'm crazy. In this one, he's just kind of there. Well, right, he's wackadoodle. And in this, it's you're introducing the public into a car that can do this stuff. But not really doing it that much. But doing it more than anybody expects. Deaton 68. Yeah. It just, I don't know, it just didn't really flow with me very well. Um, so our actors, Dean Jones, from That Darn Cat... Yeah, and, and we, we the already, ugly Dosh and yeah, and we already talked about it. And it's just kind of, eh. he just didn't. I just didn't really like his character that much. I and think. And that darn cat, nineteen ninety seven, Kelly's favorite movie. Oh yeah, so good. <laughs> Must be my favorite. Michelle Lee as Carol, which you don't learn her name until about three quarters through the movie. Okay, that was extremely annoying. I just yeah. kept saying that lady, the gal. The gal. <laughs> but she's mostly famous from TV and this and how to succeed on business something movie. You really think it was you winning those races? Yeah, and she was in something called Knott's Landing. Oh, Knott's Landing, yeah, which was a big uh, evening time soap opera drama mo- show. Yeah, and David Tomlinson played... Um, <laughs> what's the villain's name? Tomlinson. Thorndike. Or Thorndike, yeah. Thorndike. So I had a hard time remembering Thorndike. I have yeah. having to look it up over and over and over again. And it's, like I said, basically Mr. Banks, which is fine, but it just, he was literally wearing the same outfit. Yeah, he's wearing I the mean, same everything, and it was just, just unsettling. A, he's a cunty English banker. It's the same, yeah, it's the but same part. And this this is his second career. Where, oh, I, I, lo- I left my job from the bank, so now I'm going to be a car enthusiast. Like, And right. just, when he's driving the cars, I'm just, he looks too proper. Like, it doesn't look right. This is after he sends those little kids off to co- off to uh what do you call it uh what what's this, the school uh finishing school yeah moves to america and starts selling and raising cars yeah and it's because <laughs> his wife is involved in the suffragette yeah. so she's like yeah. <laughs> you yeah, exactly. she just leaves him so now he has to go and sell cars that's right tell me what part of ireland did you say your mother came from and then we have uh, Buddy Hackett, who's best known as a stand-up comic making fun of Chinese people. He's kind of great in this, though. I like his. Funny. I, I yeah. enjoyed his character in this. Um, for other Disney people, he is the voice of Scuttle the Seagull and Little Mermaid, which is a notable character in that movie. Right, um, right, right. Which David doesn't know anything about, but eh, maybe more than you might think. But he was he was the savior in this thing, and then Benson Fung, the the Chinese. Uh, wealthy man. He was in one million TV shows. Yeah, as like always the token yeah. Asian person. And so. Joe Flynn Habershaw, he was in a couple of the other weird Disney movies that we're going to have to watch. Like Which ones? Strongest Man in the World and The Computer Who Wore Tennis Shoes. So, And he's, mm-hmm. the, he's a, the second lead in both of those movies. So we're going to be seeing more from Habershaw. Well, and the more we watch these movies, it's really interesting because I'm like, oh, I recognize that. Oh, right, oh, exactly. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> like Dean Shaw, when he was on the screen, I was like, wait a minute. No, wait. No, that's Zeke. Oh, yeah, it is Zeke. <laughs> but he's way worse than this. Well, and you know, Dean Jones kind of looks like um, the guy from Shaggy Dog, the dad. He does look a lot like that like, Fred McMurray guy. You're Fred not McMurray, wrong. Thank you. They yeah. do. They do look like they could be related. So it's yeah. it's really interesting. Just all these movies, they they all kind of tie together. But he's not nearly as good as McMurray. No, 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 no. I mean, he's really good in that darn cat. But I think that that's just the material suits his personality better. <sighs> yeah, exactly. He he's better like, at being a suit. Yeah, he just, and that's I think why I didn't. I had such a problem with it. Is he just? And maybe it's because I kept associating him in my head with that darn cat. No, I don't think that's it. I don't think he he doesn't he, he doesn't have the race car driver feel. No, he doesn't have that like James Dean kind of like Ooh. cool. Yeah, yeah, he's not cool. He's just kind of a dork. Like it just yeah yeah. I just don't buy it. Um, they would have been better off with McMurray than him. Yes, <laughs> Moochie. Moochie. <laughs> <laughs> they would have been better off with Moochie than him. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Moochie would have been rad as him, and I'm not going to lie. I wonder what that kid looked like as an adult, Because though. that would have been kind of like, uh, what do you mean adult? Moochie was like 
10 or 12 during this this would have just been the same moochie no i meant now like oh, like as no, like we when don't, he, i don't think we want to know what that looks like like how many wrinkles does he have no, i'm excuse. also gonna guess that he didn't make it far into adulthood probably not <laughs> if we're gonna get an angry letter from moochie <laughs> <laughs> i'm still here oh gee <laughs> but now i have to know so hold on um <laughs> thank god for google <laughs> oh my god no i hate it i I prefer the days without it much better it was better to argue and have fun so kevin corcoran died in 2015 oh he made it he had a run yeah 1972 to 2015 what what no that's not him that can't oh, be wait him. that was his marriage sorry no he's still He's still alive. Oh, no. Died October 6, 2015. Oh, there you go. He was born in June 10th, 1949. Yeah, there you go. Okay. He lived in California his entire life. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Enough about this person who wasn't even in Moochie. this movie. Moochie. Um, did you have any fun facts, David? Well, I blew one of them. This was Walt Disney's final film before he kicked the can. Final live action film. Yeah, final he, live action film. He, yeah. Did he see it all the way through, or did he? Yeah, yeah. This is his final like project. Interesting. So, did he do this before he did Sword in the Stone? Because that was his final animation project. I don't know. I oh. didn't get that deep. Okay. Which one came out first? I mean. I mean, it was probably this because live action takes no time compared to animation. Sword in the Stone came out in 1963. Okay. So, so. this was his last. Oh, yeah, because they weren't doing a ton of animation. Yeah. Um. What about you? I, I do have some. Sorry, I just had to pull it back up. I have two. Over 20 Volkswagens were used in the making of this film in different capacities, depending on what they were needed for. No surprise. It was the most common car. For a long time. <laughs> Several Volkswagens were destroyed in the making of this film. <laughs> yeah. That wasn't my fact. And then but... so, my other one is that Dean Jones also played the hippie at oh, the drive-in. Yeah. Oh, that is a very fun fact. Yeah. <laughs> How fun is that? <laughs> I can't even picture it. Now I want to like go back and watch yeah. it. Oh, that's hilarious. We're all locked in. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and that's the so, thing is there were certain things about the movie that were hilarious. Yeah. But it just it just felt so long and I don't know if it's cuz I'm a little tired, but it I just... think I think we're just going to disagree on this movie because I thought a lot of it was funnier than you did. I think even though you LOL'd multiple times during this movie. Yeah, there was some of it that I did, but I just eh, it was just some of it. I think the parts of it that were too long, just that really the end is basically oh, it's too long. God, I can't. Um, so my last fact, it's a little bit of a long one, but I just think it's really cute. When production started, Disney set up a casting call for about a dozen cars and kept them outside the studios for the crew to examine during their breaks. The lineup included Toyotas, Volvos, and of course the pearl white VW. When the crew walked by to inspect the cars, they would kick the tires and grab the steering wheel to see how it handled. However, when they came across the Volkswagen, they began to pet it. So the Beetle got the job. <laughs> Like, it wasn't always going to be a Beetle. They should have picked a... No, it's perfect. A yeah. Toyota. No, because the Beetle's too common. The Beetle was everywhere. They should have picked something a little bit more... That had a little more personality. Meet, meet. I don't know. He had, he had a decent amount of personality. No, 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 no. I mean more personality than a Volkswagen Beetle. I understand people get mega huge boners over the Beetle, but there's a lot better cars you could have chosen from. What, like a Pinto? No, no! Like I said, like one of those late 60s Toyotas or something that looks just super cool and is also still very small. But don't you think they would have picked this because it doesn't look like a car that could go fast? Neither either? do those. The, you gotta remember, this once again was the most common car of the time. That's what's really weird about it to me. Yeah, that's true. And maybe on the back end, they probably had some sort of a deal with Volkswagen uh, to promote it. I don't know. Maybe. I think that they probably did. Come on now. It's all about money. Should we walk it out? Yeah, let's let's try and march our way through this as good as we can. So I don't know how good my notes are, because I kept kind of 
getting that, distracted. That's what I mean. I don't know. I don't know if it's worth going into painstaking detail on this one. No, I mean, we'll just do the best we can. Yeah. Well, it's not just that. I'll try and not slow us down like I usually do. <laughs> no, you forgot about this. Oh. <laughs> So we have this big racing opening with it, a bunch of crashing. Is this demolition derby? Is that what this is supposed no, to be? Uh, old school racing was extremely dangerous. Like you'd have races in the fifties and sixties, and it wasn't a race unless a couple of people died, like literally died. Because this was really long, the credit intro, yeah. which is, which is expected from these type of movies. I thought this was supposed to be essentially demolition derby or something uh, right and i thought it was going to be more in this vein than it was because then later when they're talking to him they're like why are you doing that and he's like oh it's all i can do i can't race anymore blah 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 <laughs> and so i just thought this was like almost like he's a circus clown kind of like he's not really doing his real right. thing or something so we open up with jim getting wrecked in his race and He's all cut up on the face, and he's driving home with the taxi cab, who you said was... Oh, oh, oh! From yeah, Boatin that guy from, from Boatnix. Boatnix. <laughs> and the guy is in the taxi is like, hey, you're too old to race. You can't do this anymore. You're just, you're done, dude. You're, yeah. You need to move on, go sell cars, be a mechanic, whatever. And so I don't think he was the taxi driver. He was probably the bookie or like the head. He was, yeah, he was one of the, he had something to do with the races, yeah, he's but like, whatever. All oh, these guys are 18 and 19 and you're old as fuck. Yeah. And so he's just, yeah. And then we meet Buddy Hackett, the wacky uh, sculptor. Yeah, he's like got some weird car fetish because they're going through this whole back and forth conversation and Buddy and um, his name is Tennessee apparently. Yeah, yeah. And he's Jim is like, "What did you do to the such and such car?" And he's like, "Oh, I just couldn't help myself." The Edsel, his Edsel, his like, own car. Like he had to cut it open, and I'm like, "That's yeah." He cut weird. it up and welded it into a. I I don't even know what like a flower, <laughs> something. Yeah. And his name is Tennessee Tennessee Steinmetz, which yeah. I'm gonna guarantee you, there's no Jewish guy named Tennessee. I'm just gonna yeah. throw that out there. And he goes into this whole long thing about, oh, I was uh, in in China with the Dalai Lama, and I... no, 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 China country. No, China country. Okay. So his whole character is super racist of non-specific Asian things that he calls Chinese. Yeah. Which is fine, or whatever, I guess. <laughs> but it, that that is just how this was. So do you think that he threw in that bit and they just added it to the script? Let me uh, let me check something real quick. I gotta check something because it's gonna bother me because I don't want to roast this guy as hard as I can if it's not really true. <laughs> David says, ah! you buddy hack <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> go but I'm, go I, burn in a fire. But just like with most of our pop culture things, I'm pretty sure right oh yeah i'm definitely right <laughs> david just verifying his uh his like, most famous bit is called the chinese waiter so yeah he's just a weird dude and yeah because he's like now he's like a hippie in the san francisco sense of like the eastern oh dude yeah it, it's weird and he doesn't really fit the part because he's a big fat greasy guy i actually kind of enjoy that part of no him. that part is great but yeah. it's just I think that's part of the characterization. I liked seeing myself in that character role. Oh. <laughs> I personally relate to Herbie. <laughs> so all of a sudden, Dean Jones is walking down the street. He looks into this car dealership. He scares this lady with nice legs. Well, yeah, he gets very obviously distracted by her legs. And then it's like her face doesn't match up with her legs, and it's a weird well, thing. And see, that's the thing. is She's 24 in this movie, and she looks like she's... 41 and a half yeah it just i think part of it is the haircut and i think and some of it's the fake eyelashes too because it looks like she has a bird on her eyelashes <laughs> put a bird on it so maybe this lady because there's a picture of her on when you look her up on imdb that's 10 or 15 years later and she looks 12 years younger than she does in this yeah, movie it's, so it's, this movie i think they just kind of did something really bad to that poor lady it's the haircut that's a big part of it the haircut yeah, is, and i think some of it was the lipstick yeah it just wasn't great it was not a good look um and when they he goes inside and it's a car dealership 
or car agency, as they like to say. Well, it was an agency because they sell fancy European cars. And he gets very distracted by some special car. And it's, which is literally called the special. Yeah, which just, oh, how original can he get? Which kind of looks like it maybe is a Jaguar or something like that. I hate British cars that are like this where you sit at the back of it. There's 18 feet of engine in front of you, and the car basically looks like a dick. I do not like those cars. Yeah, but they like it because it looks like a dick. Yeah, it makes like them feel that. powerful. Yeah, I'm sure it does. They're basically the <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I... I'm steering the <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Um... So, and all of a sudden he's like, oh, no, I just need some cheap, honest transport. Dude rips the sherry away from him. Well, He's all so mad at him, and Herbie rolls into his shin. You skipped over how we got to the sherry. Wait, because he scares the lady? No, because she goes in there, but then Mr... Um, I keep going to call him Mr. Banks, but Mr. Thorndike comes out and thinks he wants to buy the special, and is, like, treating him like... Well, he's green. acting like he wants to buy it. Yeah, so he brings out all the alcohol, blah, right. blah, blah. Yeah, he re- you know, he's like, oh, you don't want to buy this fancy car, like, $75? Like, when could you get a car for $75? Then, oh, then you could have got a used car for 75 I bucks. I can't. But I can't even imagine. Yeah. Um, and We can still get a used car for $500. It's not going to be that great. Yeah. But, so, like, where did Herbie come from? He just shows All up. All of a sudden, he just rolls into his shin. Yeah. Which, and they're like, oh, well, this came from some broken down thing. Got a terrible backstory. Yeah. Um, Jim leaves with a little wink to Carol, who we didn't know her name at this time. He gets on the trolley and Herbie follows him home. Yeah, because basically he def- he defended Herbie in the agency right. because Mr. Thorndike was like, we got to kill this car. Oh, so, yeah, because he stood up for Herbie. He's like, oh, you leave that car alone. And and he wakes up in the morning to the cops screaming at his window, hey, you, you stole this car because it's kind of oh, in the front of your house. Oh, oh, so this is the, oh, 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 guys, the cop. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, sorry. That actually makes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no more sense, but. Yeah, no. Um, so he's like, oh, well, uh, so he gets. It seems like he gets arrested, but instead they're arguing at the Thorndike dealership. Yeah, I don't know why all... This is what didn't make sense. See, oh, you stole this car, but they're going to go down to dealership, and they're, all of a sudden he's like, I guess I'm going to buy it, and they're drawing up the paperwork, because... Well, no, it was her idea to kind of compromise and say, hey, you need a cheap car, you've got your $75 down payment, Yeah, why don't we it... settle this so that... Nobody's in trouble. There's a bunch of shenanigans showcasing that the car has a mind of its own. Yeah, the car oils Thorndike. Yeah, and for some reason, then he takes it back because he's like, this car is crazy. Well, no, 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 because the car, he takes the car out to the freeway and the car is scared of the freeway and it drives back to the dealership. (laughs) Which doesn't make any sense. And then he's like, this thing is crazy. So Carol jumps in the car to drive it. She's like, it drives fine. And she's like, oh, I'm a racing and machinery aficionado. I love cars and all this and that. And then suddenly the car takes them hostage with her driving. And we totally skipped over the part where he came up to the agency and just, like, bounced off of the guy's Rolls Royce, like, comically. Just basically just starts driving. And she's like, let me out. Blah, 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 blah. And then she, they pull up to this burger joint because the, the, um car has decided that's where they need to go and she can't get a out. A very seedy burger joint. Yeah, and so she's like, help I'm trapped and the waitress is just trashy and hilarious. Yeah, and she's you stay in your own seat. Oh, hey, hey, look, we have a little problem here. Would you mind helping the young lady get her car door open? Look, I'm busy. And furthermore, I ain't no mechanic. Yeah, because she's trying desperately to get to out of cl- the car. To climb over, yeah. And this is where the, the hippie where Dean Jones' hippie guy is like we're all locked in, man. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> Which is hilarious. I really enjoy this whole scene. Yeah. With the angry waitress and this whole thing. Herbie takes off and takes them to the Kissing Mountain Hill. Oh, yeah. Thing. To the Lover's Lane type yeah. of thing. And so Dean Jones, first he's like, oh, hey, he's trying to get with her. And she's oh, like, yeah, he's like, oh, you drove us here. Or you want to. <laughs> yeah. And she's, no. <laughs> you and so she gets she gets out and he's following her and they go down the hill and the cop stops him and he's like hey you kid crazy kids you stop doing that yeah and he's and then the cop's like i should have decided giving you a ticket for not 
doing your breaks and then the cop's car rolls into suddenly a lake that's there for no reason because he didn't set his brake. And it's like, oh, how ironic, don't you think? Uh, back to Tennessee and Jim. And Tennessee is waxing on about how machines and people evolve together and their intellect, man, and it all comes together as one. And, like, the cars are smarter than us, man, because there's, like, technology that we put into them. And, and, and you know, man, this car has heart. And it's like, man gotta talk to it and be nice to it man and that's his whole hippie thing and jim's like no everything can be explained and he says some comment about like you could have had a good home here or something to the car and it's like weird and fetishy about the car because he like wants to take it apart or something yeah it's it's very strange it, yeah but then um, we make wake up the next morning with herbie taking the neighborhood dogs for a drive <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, and Tennessee's like, yo, Herbie, be cool. Be cool, man. Like, take it easy. Yeah, he's like, don't don't show everybody your magic yet. Um, and so they all of a sudden, Herbie's got a new paint job. Right. His, and, and there's this weird scene where they're doing a whole bunch of automotive puns in between this and that. That's very off-putting. Yeah, so now Herbie's a real racer. Tennessee... Well, Herbie's comically faster than everybody else. Yeah, it, it's stupid. Um, And Tennessee keeps being like, Oh, not yet, Herbie! Blah, blah, well, blah. well, yeah. It, no, no, this is before the racing. Because, well, he... Oh, boy, this is confusing. No, they go to the race, and Tennessee is, like, cheering them on, and he's telling Herbie, like, oh, don't go too fast, Oh, blah, right, blah, blah, but blah. then when we're done, Mr. Thorndike wants the car back. Yeah, and so they make a bet on the next race about, oh, if you win, you can keep the car, if I win, I can, I can keep the car, and blah, 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 blah. Right, so then there's race shenanigans... And he wins, and then there, he's racing all over California and winning. And yeah, then, it's a happy racing montage. And then we go to, like, the big Mexican road race. Okay, this was the weirdest part, because he... This is where Kelly really started laughing. Well, there's, like, chickens on the, the side of the thing, and they're just... The it's, fake cactus uh, really got you. When it knocked over the yeah. fake cactus, you started cackling. <laughs> okay, because it was insane. Like, this cactus just boom and just falls apart. Like, this saguaro cactus, which if you ran into that in real life, your car would be, you would stop. No, you'd bust through it, but it'd be, like, juicy and then most of it would stick to your car. Um, so then after Thorndike loses, he throws a fit. And, I mean, the, he, he throws... This is, like, one of the best acting parts of this movie. He just throws an absolute fit at the end. I demand that this thing is impounded and checked. I tell you. I tell you there's more going on here than meets the eye. While Carol's on the phone arranging a date with Jim. And then he tells her that she has to date Jim to get some special information. But she was going to do it anyways. Yeah. And, and so, she, so she was essentially dating Thorndike before all of this? I guess. I don't think she was. I think she was just his assistant. But they were going to, like, go to dinner. I and... think I, I think in his misguided way, he was maybe trying to... I don't think. He didn't get his dipstick in there. No, no, no. No, no oil for him. Couldn't reach. And so while they're going out, Thorndike just shows up at the house. To check out Herbie. And Tennessee's like, oh, yeah, come and have some Irish coffee. Yeah, and, it's one and, of, a, and in the meantime, Carol's letting Jim drive the special, and they go to Make Out Hill. And meanwhile, it keeps cutting back to Thorndike in Tennessee, and they're just getting drunk. Yeah, drinking Irish coffees. And then Thorndike proceeds to go over and pour the Irish coffee down, like, the oil compartment no so in a in a bug that's where you put the gas in oh yeah. okay so it's like maybe herbie's gonna be drunk now i think that it's exactly what the next yeah. scene was trying yeah, to say yeah, yeah. is that herbie was drunk and hung over and and in tennessee tells thorndike that the secret of herbie is its heart yeah and my favorite line in all of this is when they're on make out hill it was just so uncomfortable. He Jim says to Carol, you're as beautiful as General Grant on the $50 bill. <laughs> you're as beautiful as General Grant on the $50 bill. What is wrong with you? That's So you, you didn't like, oh, I heard Jim Douglas is only into fast cars and easy money. 
And he's like, well, you know, that's what he said right before that. So really, all he wants is fast cars, easy money, and loose checks. I just, you're as beautiful as General Grant on the $50 bill. What does that even mean? What kind of compliment is that? Grant is pretty hot on the 50 I mean, is he the hottest of the... Wait, is he... Oh, easily. Uh, is he a founding father? With No, no, no. He's Civil War. With the beard, Ugh. he's way better looking than all the rest of the bills. <laughs> he's banging. Um. <laughs> okay, you look at all the you lay all the bills out, and then you tell me which one's banging. You're gonna be like the fifty. <laughs> <laughs> we should test that theory. Yeah, we should. Um, which one do you think is the most attractive of the bills? Of in the our, bills is it Washington? U.S. currency? Jefferson? I mean. Franklin? <laughs> Lincoln on that penny, though. Let's not count him out. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't Lincoln on the five as well? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, come on. <laughs> Shut up. I don't carry cash. I Who's don't... on the ten? I don't even remember anymore. Oh well. I don't carry cash. Who's on the two? That's what I want to know. Jefferson. On the two? Yeah, Jefferson's on the two. Is he on something else? I don't think so. They're just like, here, here's two dollars. You're too ugly. No, he was. <laughs> It's unfortunate, but as a Jefferson Hour fan He's and listener. He's just not as beautiful as General Grant. Um, oh, so they go to the race the next day, and there, you know, there's more racing, and oh, more racing, and I'm like, God, get to the freaking point. And see, so from here on out, there's a lot of racing and then a little story, which yeah. is rough. Yeah. So this is where Herbie is drunk, and then all of a sudden he, when he pulls over, he like spits out the irish coffee and then of course tennessee just eats it and i'm thinking why would you put that in your mouth well like, he tries it and then after this there's also a scene where he has a little <laughs> thorn dyke yeah at the end after he loses so after this carol comes to visit herbie and jim jim's not there yeah jim's like <laughs> this i lost he's really a sore loser he's a punk and it's really off-putting and so she has this long conversation with Tennessee where Tennessee's like, he's suffering, Carol, you gotta help him. So she, like, puts on her Ugh. coveralls and she so, starts working on him. Okay, this part where she puts the coveralls on over her blazer, <laughs> I'm like, that was, it, it's dumb, it's a little thing. Any woman is going to take off that blazer and then put the coveralls on. You're not gonna... anybody because you're going to be able to move better with the coveralls on. You're not going to put the coveralls locked. on over your blazer, and it's a small <laughs> thing, but that would have made the scene less annoying because that's all I could think about the entire scene was she's got a blazer on under there. And then uh, Jim shows up in some big fancy car, and he's I need a big strong car. I'm and... without a big car, I'm half of a man. Yeah, that's my favorite quote from the movie. <laughs> Tennessee's freaking out because he wants to sell Herbie, and yeah, Carol's Thorn pissed that he wants to sell Herbie. Thorndike calls him and offers him two thousand dollars for Herbie. I need the money. You crumb! You can't do that to Herbie. Carol, will you tell him how it is out in the real world? Me? Huh. Well, near as I can figure it, I'm not too smart either. I get rid of one heel just in time to find another. Well, now, what happened to you? I thought you'd be on my side. Not when you do something like this to Herbie. Yeah. And then they go outside, and Herbie is smashing the Lamborghini, which is hilarious. Right. And then Thorndike shows up. Oh, here's two $2,000. And Herbie leaves. Herbie takes off on his own. Yeah. And then there's a really awkward scene of jim looking for herbie and it's all misty it's foggy it's san francisco foggy, foggy whatever and he can't find herbie and oh my gosh herbie it was very like geppetto looking for pinocchio type. Yeah. <laughs> then he hears the little beeps from herbie and he can't find him and he's all upset because thorndike captured thorndike and his team captured herbie but, of course, Herbie immediately escapes from the garage and drives to the Golden Gate Bridge, where also... Oh, my God. <laughs> Mr. Jim goes, and David. Herbie's trying to kill himself, and Jim saves this him. Is... And then Herbie saves Jim from falling off the bridge. David, this part where he's, like, teetering over the edge. Man, man. It's ridiculous. Don't, Herbie, don't. Like, you're gonna... It's kind of... Just... 
<laughs> it's oh, over the top. It's incredible. Yeah, it that is. It's my favorite part of the movie, easily. Like, it's just so dumb. Like, the car is going to commit suicide. Well, we have some things in common, then. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it, Herbie. Um, Don't do it. And so, then, he saves Jim, and there's this stupid cop hippie joke about, oh, you've been too much on that hey ashbury trip. Yeah. And... And we totally skipped over the car crashing into Chinatown, but it did. Which is important because then they're in the police station and they're doing a car, car lineup, lineup with the horns. He's listening for the horns. And so Herbie's horn goes off. They recognize it. And there's also a dried squid inside of Herbie. Yeah. And so then... Basically, we, they, they're talking to... We hit up this abacus scene where they're being super racist with the abacus and the Chinese guy. And the squid. And the squid. Yeah. And, and then Tennessee's like, yo, I can speak some Chinese to this dude <laughs> and make him and make him help us out. And they don't have subtitles. No. Which I actually kind of prefer. So he talks to him and then the Teng Wu guy whips out like the book with Ocho in it. Yeah, and then he decides, oh, I want this car. And so then all of a sudden, um, Jim is saying, oh, if I win the race, you can, you'll can you have to agree to sell Herbie to me for a dollar. And you can keep all the prize money. And then all of a sudden, he just stops speaking Chinese. Oh, you're now speaking you're speaking, speaking my, my language. language. <laughs> Which was very much Boatnik's-esque with What's-Her-Face Pearl was, Diver. It was right out of the same page. They definitely pulled it out of the same page. Yeah. And so then we get the big El Dorado race... And the guy is talking about no more technical mamby pamby. This is going to be a race of brute and brawn and race. And brr, brr. But really, he's just going to cheat the whole time. Right. So then Tang Wu has a side bet with Thorndike. Yeah. And and Haversaw, the little rat, did a bunch of sabotage for day one. Yeah. And there's a whole bunch of things that happen in this race scene. I only wrote down some of them because it's just a lot. It's literally, I think, a 45-minute scene. It is. So, like, Thorndike with the oil, with it first spins them out. Yeah. The bear replacing okay. Havershaw. The bear was my favorite part because the bear gets in the car and he's, would you give me something to wipe off these goggles? And the bear just, like, extends his paw and he's like, choo, 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 choo. <laughs> The bear part is very funny. <laughs> bear extending his paw and then the bear is like super freaked out and they're just like and then he's freaked out and then finally they get out and that the bear part was the only part of the end racing that i liked it was and there's this weird part where herbie runs out of gas and team tang Wu, they a group of like 10 guys pick up the car and run it into town to get gas and service chinese camp was the name of the town well the chinese mine which i mean now sounds oh my god horrible but back then was very normal and it would have been very normal for a group of chinese people to mine a thing yeah and, and, and there's the super mine. old chinese people yeah who are working the gas, the gas tank. tank and he's like you can't leave it's not full yet they it's like changed, chained they changed his car down yeah Which, this whole end part is funny but it just was too long it was way too long and they could have cut 20 minutes out of this movie and it would have been great it was almost like because there was three of them in the car i'm like what is this rally racing she's like you're gonna come up on a bridge or something. Well, that's what... Yeah, that, this part is rally racing. That's why there's a team. Yeah, he lost a wheel at some point. They and have then to, he lost another wheel. And they have to lean out of the car to, to make it go. To balance it. And then they put a wagon wheel on it somehow. Yeah, and so they make it way late. And yeah, after way after every other car. Yeah. And so Thorndike comes and... Um, and the car is done for and and tang Wu's like no it's over he's like when you come to the last page close the book well and in the middle of this this is where i was like oh they're trying to make it serious like they have this dramatic heart to heart between carol and jim and then they kiss and it ugh, I could have done oh the... yeah the kiss was really strange it, but that's what i'm saying is that all of these other disney movies where they have the end crazy wackadoodle scene it's just wackadoodle there's no 
And that's, I think, part of the problem is that this was broken up right in the middle of the two wackadoodle ends, and it was very disjointing. And... That, that's fair. This part did disjoint because then when Thorndike comes to get Herbie to crush him because they didn't finish the race, suddenly Herbie now comes back to life. You being better, Ocho. Yep, go Ocho, go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now they're gonna finish it. It's time to win. They have to wait hours after Thorndike even pulls off to start their part of the race. God, all these They other... catch up immediately. Yeah, because everyone else sucks. Yeah, obviously. And well, and so does Thorndike, obviously. Thorndike gets swallowed by the car. Yeah. <laughs> after they take a bunch of cross-country shortcuts to get there. And then Herbie splits in two somehow? Yeah, somehow the car falls in half. Which was telegraphed by Tennessee being like, oh, I got a weld over my welds over my welds. Basically saying the car's falling apart. Yeah. And yeah, so it's in half. It doesn't stop. The back half with Tennessee is the part that actually wins. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh, yeah. And then we cut to a scene with Thorndike and Havershaw, who are now mechanics for Tang Wu, who took over his shop. And he's all mad and... They spray each other with oil. Yeah, the oil fight was a good last little bit. And then... I don't know if you caught, the one guy, Haversham, puts the oil thing inside of ha- uh, Thorndike's like, pants and squirts him with <coughs> oil. And he's like, ooh! <laughs> yeah, I did. And then there's the scene with, with Ocho where he's feeling better again. And he's looking all polished and new and happy. And we're like, oh, you're feeling better, Ocho. He's not on a cruise ship, though, so how good could it be? I don't know. There's no Cloris Leachman around. No, nope. and no captain either. No captain. No Harvey Corman. Oh, God. Although, the one part at the beginning of the movie when Jim was, when she was like, oh, hello, I met you. And then Jim's like, oh, excuse me. And you looking at the hot car. Okay. So what was your favorite part, Kelly? Um, easily Herbie trying to commit car aside. No, Herbie, don't! Off yeah, the so Gate Bridge. I kind of combine that with jealous Herbie tries to kill the Lambo <laughs> into him then committing suicide. That whole part was my favorite part. Yeah, and then I'll give an honorable mention to the bear at the car scene, like, just <laughs> with his paw just wiping off the, the goggles. Like, oh, here you go. My ar- my honorable mention goes to the Irish whiskey scene. That was or also the Irish coffee. Irish coffee shenanigans. That was with my third honorable mention going to. The car rape scene where they're at the drive through, the drive in, oh. and the hippie, and all that. I thought that was pretty funny with the really rude waitress. Yeah. That was pretty funny. Well, she's like, I'm trapped, help. But, yeah, yeah, help. And everybody's just like, no, lady, you're not. Get yeah. out of here. So earlier when I was trying to look up those songs, I was trying to find the jingle. Yeah, the score for this movie is excellent. I really liked it. It was just the same song over and over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but Score. it's John Strauss. There's a couple, a number of songs, just unrecognizable. <laughs> yeah, we I mean we already talked about Kelso kind of at length, but he's just Kelso. Or um, Jim Douglas. <laughs> um, sorry. Jim. The douchey race car driver who's... Yeah, I, I just, mean, it is very believable, but it's also very boring. Yeah, and I just wasn't really... I didn't have any... And it is kind of like Cars with Lightning McQueen. I really didn't have any sympathy for him at all. Right. He didn't really seem to change at all over the movie. Like, right, he seemed, right. Like, at least in Cars, he kind of was, oh, I'm different now. Even though barely. Barely. And so the and it, even the lady, even Carol is a lot like the lady in Cars. Mm, They're very similar characters. They are, um, but she still she could have been replaced with kind of anyone. Um, right? Who played the lady in Cars? Yeah, I guess exactly. I guess you're right. And I just yeah, I wasn't really into it. And Herbie, like we talked about, he just wasn't as well. Herbie, I barely even consider a character because that's how bad Herbie was in this movie. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't great. And the the standout is Thorndike is the villain because he was terrible and excellent throughout the movie. Yeah, still Mister Banks, but he <laughs> he is one of the better parts of the movie. He's you know he's a little wacky. He's he's a good villain for this type of movie. Yeah, very um, good. 
Yeah, but so I did. I did enjoy it, but I just really didn't enjoy Dean's yeah. perform. Uh, what's his face? And for for side characters, Car- Carol is just weird. It kind of doesn't make a lot of sense when she decides to switch teams. Yeah, it's just kind of off putting. Yeah, and Tennessee is great. Yeah, he's he's actually I think my favorite character in the movie. I really enjoyed all the parts that he was in. I'm your friend. Yeah. Like every time during the races when he was like, Go, Herbie, go. Not like, yet, not yet. Yeah. Now go. Yeah. Yeah. No, I enjoyed all of his parts quite a bit. And so the cinematography was nothing to write home about. It no, was fine. It was actually honestly, I felt pretty poor, even for the time. It was uh, no, 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 no. Even for the time, because we've watched other movies that are older than this and it just everything was kind of fuzzy and like kind of just it, it just wasn't good. I mean, Boatniks came out not that long after this and it had way better cinematography than this. So what was your biggest surprise or disappointment, Kelly? I was actually really surprised at how much I really didn't like Dean Jones's performance because I really do like him as an actor, but I just really didn't like it. But I was very disappointed by this is the original Herbie movie and the lack of actual backstory. Like, where did Herbie come from? Where was he manufactured? Why is he special? Does he have All like... Valid. A mom, like <laughs> <laughs> Urbina. Yeah, I just it the it's the original Herbie, and yet we still have no idea where he came from. So I just that was a little disappointing. So my whole thing was that this was way more race centric than I ever wanted one of these movies to be. You know, it was because like Herbie goes bananas. There's a little bit of racing, but nobody really cares about it. Yeah, this was very centered on racing. And for anybody who knows anything, a VW Bug can't race. Well, right. And it's so that's kind of like. Um, and like, I know that's supposed to be part of the point, but give me a break. No, but that's like uh, planes with a freaking crop duster yeah, racing. Yeah, like, it, yeah. well, and a good chunk of the movie was just close ups of Dean Jones's face, like. <laughs> and then it would switch over to. Um, was his Thorndike's face, and it just, and I don't know, it just wasn't... <laughs> which, which the Thorndike face is always good, but... I just still think he's too proper to So be... what's your quotable, mo- do you have a quotable line? Yeah, and this is a new thing that we're adding for everybody, yeah. it's our quotable lines. And this is actually really stupid, but it's, so in the Irish coffee scene, when first Thorndike comes to the door, he says, Sorry, the other rats are out for the evening. I don't know what that even means, but it's just so weird. It means that the rats went out of the house are out looking for stuff. Yeah, no, I just, I don't know. And for me, I'm going to repeat what I said already when you come to the last page. Close the book. I thought you'd pick a different one, but okay. No, that's the one. So if you read this movie, remade this movie, what would you change about it? Just for the love of God, shorten some of those race scenes. Like it... That really killed this for me. Like, I, as much as I did enjoy if some of the scenes of the movie, and there are certain parts that I think are hilarious, I didn't really enjoy this movie that much. They needed, they did need to shorten it. Yeah. I, I just didn't care. I mean, who cares if they remade it? Because there's five more. There really is. We've, so we've watched Herbie Goes Bananas. The next one is Herbie Rides Again, and then there's the Monte Carlo Monte one. Monte Carlo, then Goes Bananas, then oh, Rides the new Again. Oh, the, yeah. the new one. The um, fully yeah. loaded with Lindsay right. Lohan. Yeah. So, I mean, for final thoughts, this it's a fun enough ride. It spawned five more movies. Yeah. Watch Herbie Goes Bananas instead. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I know a lot of people are going to hate us. And I know a lot of people love this movie. I don't even dislike it. It's just not what I wanted it to be. I don't really like this movie at all. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's very boring. Um, there are certain parts that are charming. And I I get that it's a classic. But I meant what I said. I enjoyed Herbie Goes Bananas. Like, if, if they would have had more scenes that were, like, the bear scene, I, like... I would have given this movie like a hundred percent. And see, but... really, I would have swapped my rating for this with Herbie Goes Bananas, and if I would have seen it now and then, but uh, whatever. Um, so this movie had a budget of only five million dollars, mm-hmm. and it made fifty-one million. So it made a lot of money. But see, it's hard to say if it made that money over time or right away. But I think we both know, based on how popular Herbie Goes Bananas is, 
with our podcast that this is going to be extremely popular with our Probably. audience. So, so if you're going to rate this movie, Kelly, what would you rate it? So I'm going to preface this by I just thought it was way too long. And I just, I'm not into racing. And I just, but there were parts that were delightful, but not enough. It just really, all of the racing, Dean, uh, what's his face? Uh, Dean Jones's performance, the dialogue, it just wasn't enough for me. So I gave this movie a 38%. Oh, I thought you were going to give it a higher, you going to give it single digits. No, 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 I didn't. So I gave this movie a 64%. Oof. It's bad. But it's not that bad. I don't hate it. Mm, I don't like Dean it. Jones, like, the more we talked about it, the more I dislike the Dean Jones part. But I do like racing. And I do like cars. And I probably understood more of the jokes than you did. Probably 50 to 90% more of the jokes than, than you did. I just needed more. I guess I'm just easily entertained. I need more of, like, the bear paw coming, coming across so, screen. Right, right. That's what? that's kind of what I'm getting at, is that... There were the car equivalent of the bear paw throughout this movie. Yeah. So, for me, that was okay. I was like, okay, I get it. This is kind of funny. I just needed more sight gags, I guess. I guess that's what I need from these (laughs) movies, is from these older movies. I like all the sight gags. I do not need sight gags. And it just didn't have enough, and it was too much. So, what do you think the Rotten Tomatoes score was? Um, I'm going to guess... No, I didn't see. I'm going to guess, like, with the critics, probably... Not good. Probably like a 57. So it's 76 with the critics and 66 with the people. Mm. So, you know, in line with me, not so much with you. No, I'm definitely in the minority and I fully admit that. I just, I don't like racing. I really don't. I think it's really boring. It's literally one of the most boring things. I would rather just watch paint dry. Uh, Yeah, with watching it, I'm kind of with you. So now it's time for Kelly's favorite part of the podcast bet your ass that's my favorite part of the podcast but just hold on let me take a sip i need to get i need to get ready that's all right sometimes you like go too fast and it's god i wasn't ready like i have to mentally prepare because it could be something super awesome it could also be something that i have no idea what it is it's just the list gets smaller every week. It's like, Well, oh you God. will know what this is. Oh, God. Stop. That's too much pressure. I literally just felt my entire butt clench when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> it's from... Wait, what's the number? It's number 261. Uh, uh. It's from 2003. It's 2003's Freaky Friday. Oh. <laughs> okay. I, I have seen this. Yeah, I've seen this. I haven't seen it. I know exactly what it is. It's Jamie Lee Curtis and Lindsay Lohan yep. switch spots. Yep. So I don't I don't know what I mean, I don't know if this is a good movie or a bad movie. I basically based on the Lohan factor, it's probably good. Well, this is when she started getting like not good though. Is it? But Jamie Lee Curtis is generally pretty yeah, good because this is early. This is two thousand three. This yeah. isn't like I mean, this is in that same print. Isn't this before Mean Girls? Uh, I think it actually is around the same time as Mean Girls. So, so it's, this has got to be okay. Yeah, and it's in the same realm as like Princess Diaries era realm kind of thing. See, um, like think about how if if this last movie would have been as good as Princess Diaries with the San Francisco factor. Yeah, I know. It's yeah. True. Um, <laughs> so you know, I think that actually most the live action ones they don't start getting bad until like two thousand five. Even then, there's still some good ones, but more of them are bad than good yeah. after 2005. So, I've definitely seen this. I don't really remember it that... I mean, I do kind of remember it. I think I've seen it more than once on certain, like, clips, because it'd yeah. be on Disney Channel or whatever. Based on the trailers, I think I'm going to like this movie. Yeah. I mean, I don't think... I don't. They also have the original Freaky Friday, which is also on our list. I'm but... sure it is, but... I'm not as familiar with that as I am with this. And, yeah, and I really, really like Jamie Lee Curtis. So. Yeah, me too. That's why I'm kind of thinking I'm going to like this movie. But we'll see. I just remember from the trailer after they switch places, she grabs her face and yeah. she's like, oh, yeah. I'm like the Crypt Keeper. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, but exactly. I don't remember a lot of the <laughs> specifics of the movie. Right. But I just remember the f- switching places. Obviously, everybody knows about that. So Yeah, yeah. Freaky Friday. 
Uh, so in the meantime, if you'd like to follow us on social media, Facebook or Instagram at the Disney Movies. If you'd like to send us an email at the Disney Movies at gmail.com to talk to us about any old thing. Yeah. And like, subscribe, share, comment on our stuff on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, join, uh, make sure you like the Facebook page, like David said, so we can grow that as well. Throw some reviews out there. We all love five stars. Yep, we appreciate you for doing that. We see you. However, really, just listen to the podcast. That's what we like the best. So, in the meantime, this has been At the Disney Movies with the Hearts. I'm Kelly. I'm David. Bye! Bye. As soon as we say bye, she's like, oh, I'm, I'm gone. It's time I'm to out. stretch out. Let's get out of here. Are you going to make it? Thank you for creating all that extra stuff that I just have to edit out. You would have had to edit all this out anyways. Don't pretend like my snoring has anything to do with your editing. Who done a monkey's uncle? Not the correct song for this film. This film had no songs. Bum 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 ba da dum. Dum bum 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 bum.